Unit 8.4, Generalized Hooke's Law. In this unit, we focused on the following course outcome. Demonstrate the ability to transform stress and strain and find principal normal and shear stresses. In this lesson, we'll focus on the outcome. Understand material property relationships for three dimensional stresses and strains. Let's first review some important material property relationships that we've been using during this course. First, let's review Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law is commonly shown in this form, which is Hooke's Law for normal stress and strain in a single dimension. Another convenient form that we'll be using in this lesson is also shown. Hooke's Law shows us that there is a linear relationship between stress and strain. Hooke's Law has been very useful to us throughout this course. All of the structural deformation equations that we have been using and will be using in this course are based on this fundamental property. By definition, Hooke's Law only applies when a material is linearly elastic. The second relationship I'd like to review is in regards to Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio is a material property and shows us that there is a linear relationship between longitudinal strain and lateral strain. The form that we'll be using in our discussion is shown here. Let's begin with a stress element. This is a volumetric stress element. It represents an infinitesimal point in a material that is subjected to loading. And let's say we have stresses in all three dimensions, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. As a result of these stresses, we will expect the element to increase in size. There will be strain in all three dimensions. And we can consider the strain in all three dimensions as a strain occurring independently in each of the three dimensions, x dimension, y dimension, and z dimension. Let's consider the strain that will be occurring in the x direction when we have stresses in all three dimensions, x, y, and z. Let's begin with our x direction stress. It is a normal stress in tension. When it is applied to the element, we will expect there to be strain also in the direction of the stress. So that'll be a positive strain. And that strain is going to be equal to the stress in the x direction divided by the modulus of elasticity. That's Hooke's law in one dimension. So now let's consider the strain in the x direction when our stress is in the y direction. When we put a normal stress in tension on the element, the element will get longer in the y direction, but the strain in the x direction will be negative. This is a, uh, this is a lateral strain, and it's negative, we can see from the uh, Poisson's ratio equation. So this is what we expect. And we can write the strain in the x direction from a stress in the y direction is minus Poisson's ratio times the longitudinal strain, which is simply uh, sigma y divided by Young's modulus according to Hooke's law. And when we consider the strain in the x direction from our stress in the z direction, it will look like this. Once again, this is a lateral strain. It is a negative strain and it will be equal to Poisson's ratio times the longitudinal strain in the z direction, which we could rewrite here with Hooke's law. Now, if we can combine these three equations, we'll get an expression for the strain in the x direction in consideration of stresses in the x, y, and z direction. And simplifying that, we get this expression here, which is the generalized Hooke's law equation for strain in the x dimension when we have stresses in all three dimensions, x, y, and z. Using a similar process, we can develop generalized Hooke's Law equations for strain in the y direction and z direction for stresses in the x, y, and z direction. Now, let's consider shear strains. We have equations for Hooke's Law for shear stress and strains, and Here's an example. The shear strain is equal to 1 over the shear modulus times the shear stress. And what we've found is that shear strains cause deformations only. 
or changes in the element shape. And shear stress, shear strains in one plane will not cause shear strains to develop in other planes. Therefore, we do not have generalized Hooke's Law equations for shear strain. A couple more material property relationships to discuss. First of all, we saw shear modulus. It shows up in Hooke's Law equation for shear stress and strain. Using the generalized Hooke's Law equations, we can derive this expression here, which is that the shear modulus of a material is related to the modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio of that material with this expression shown. This is very useful. This is a very useful relationship because we can find the shear modulus of a material knowing just the elastic modulus and, uh, and Poisson's ratio. Another relationship is the bulk modulus, which is a measure of the stiffness of a volume of material that can be derived also using generalized Hooke's Law equations. And we see here from this expression that there is a limit on Poisson's ratio. In fact, Poisson's ratio cannot be greater than 0 0.5. For most metals that we use in engineering, Poisson's ratio has a value of about 0.3. And we're done.